I've always been a big fan of everything that Laravel gives you out of the box, whether it's authentication scaffolding with Breeze or Jetstream or interacting with Stripe with Cashier. There's also Socialite. Put simply, Socialite is just an easier way to interact with OAuth providers, think like Facebook or GitHub. But how hard is it to add a new platform to Socialite as a new provider or adapter? The answer, really not that hard. So let's build it together. Laravel Socialite already has providers supported out of the box like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and Slack. But there's an entirely community-driven website called Socialite Providers that has a ton more. Just look at how many there are. So how hard is it to contribute to one, to create a new provider for a application or a service that doesn't actually exist within this community-driven package? This video is sponsored by WorkOS, so we're gonna take some time building a new WorkOS provider adapter for Socialite. WorkOS gives you an all-in-one solution to add a complete set of complex enterprise features into your code easily. So this includes things like single sign-on, SCIM provisioning, role-based access control, audit logs, and like they say, a whole lot more. So in this video, what we're going to be using is WorkOS's auth for all SSO providers, so their single sign-on solution, as well as their AuthKit solution to be able to integrate that into Laravel Socialite to have SSO out of the box, as well as this flexible authentication UI for things like social login. Why don't we get started? So the first thing that we're gonna check is how other social providers have used this Socialite providers package and how they've created their own package for that specific provider. So how can we replicate that for work OS. I've already created my own account within here and you can see there's kind of two pieces that I want to set up. The first would be the authentication piece for AuthKit and so that's going to be okay can you sign in with Google or GitHub for example and they allow you to have some demo credentials already set up so you don't have to worry about configuring that yourself while you're in staging or while you're kind of creating this it just gives you it out of the box. So that's AuthKit and then the second piece would be the single sign-on. So using things like Okta, Google Workspace, Entra ID with SAML and OIDC identity providers. And so those are the two pieces that we're going to utilize. Maybe you have the ability within this integration to say, okay, on this login page, I just want to use AuthKit. Or maybe I can have my users who have already been set up within an organization and now log into that organization. I can pass this organization ID into that login so that they're using single sign-on with whatever provider or IDP they've set up themselves. Okay, creating a provider. We'll open up our terminal. So why don't we create a new directory? We can call that Socialite Provider Work OS. So let's open this up in our code editor. Looks like we need a provider class, a listener handler, and then a composer.json, which is where we're going to have the Socialite Providers Manager package that we're requiring. Uh, let's take a look at what other providers have done. So for example, let's say auth0 and open this up. Okay, yeah, so there's four files or a readme with three other files, the composer.json, and then there's a extend socialite. So it looks like this extends that socialite providers manager package. And then we also have the provider, which I'd assume this is where all of, yeah, all of the actual API calls come from. So we need the specific tokens, get user by token. A lot of this is going to be very similar to how we would set up the work OS provider package, but there's of course, going to be some differences as well, particularly how we're going to have two options. If we take a look at the WorkOS API again, one for authentication via SSO, and it looks like you can authenticate a user with AuthKit or SSO, and that's gonna be what we're passing in. Yeah, it looks like, okay, you can pass in the provider string, and that provider string has either this AuthKit string or any kind of different provider, and then organization ID. So in our VS Code, why don't we make those files so we can have the provider.php. We can create a new file called workOS extend socialite. 
auth0.php. And that's really similar to what this file has here. Auth0 extend socialite, work OS extend socialite. And then we'll also create a new composer.json. Perfect. Why don't I go ahead and copy some of this code and we'll just kind of make the changes that we need. Should be work OS and SSO provider. And we'll put my name here. We'll call the auto load as work OS. Everything looks good there. Why don't we copy what we need for the uh, work OS extend socialite file. That's similar to this file right here. And this is going to be where we just extend that socialite providers manager. So again, a lot of what we're doing right here is just enabling this to be called with that socialite helper function within Laravel. So that way we can say socialite and use the work OS package. And we'll say this is work OS here. We'll set this class as work OS extend socialite. And then everything looks good to go there. You'll see we have some errors and this is just because this is a, a class that hasn't actually been installed. This is what we're going to use in our code locally before we push this up to composer locally in our code. So that way we can test is everything working as it should. Now let's start creating that provider file. This is what we can eventually start testing with a new Laravel install. But let's just go ahead and work with the WorkOS API to see what we need. So it looks like what we usually need in this provider is a way to have, okay, scopes. We have a scope separator and then we need the base URL and everything like that. So let's copy what we can from this other social adapter and then we can build upon that paste it in here and we'll make any necessary changes so it looks like auth0 uses this base url in the setting and we don't probably need that within work os so it looks like for in the api it uses this authenticate and that would probably be for the token so yeah authenticate with code whereas the get authorization URL would be authorized. So it looks like there's those two links that we would need first to authorize someone. AKA okay, let's get that callback code. But then we also have this authenticate URL, which I would assume is after we receive the uh, user's code, we can then authenticate them. So we have these two different URLs. So we shouldn't not need to change that or have the user set that in this particular package like other packages and providers might we'll just hard code these in the provider itself so it looks like the provider in this case the socialite providers abstract provider which we're extending in this class it does need to have a token url and probably this get user by token function. So those are the things that we need to pass into this. We have this get token URL, which we can just return here. So if we turn this as a string, we could pass in this authenticate string there and get user by token. It looks like this needs a specific authorization bearer token. And in this case, we just need the client ID and client secret that the user is going to pass in. Let's just actually return the response for now. So we'll say this credentials response body because in the managers package in the abstract provider of OAuth 2 we have credentials response body as an array and it's using this user or in this case instantiating the user and getting the taking the access token and setting the credentials response body to the response so this should be enough in this case because the credentials response body does need the token, we probably are good to go to leave that there. How does this change, if at all? Let's take a look at the API. So the response is going to have a first name, a last name, as well as organization ID. There is no avatar, but there is a profile picture URL. So I went ahead and copied those in because the user object returns this, or the response returns this user object. We need all the parameters from the user object. So ID, email, instead of nickname, we have the specific email and then the profile picture URL. So those are the things that we're setting to the user when we're returning and mapping this user to a specific object. Okay, that looks good to go. This auth URL is probably not the one we want because what we need is this authorized URL up here. 
Let's take a look at what this build auth URL from base. So yeah, doing some digging, it looks like the internal build auth URL from base method builds the authentication URL with all the necessary parameters. So we do need to have that initiated. We are just going to pass it in that direct string instead. So we have authorize and then we can pass it in the state to the url and here's where we can probably say okay do we want to pass it in that auth kit parameter because if we take a look in this api reference this is where we can set are we passing in an organization id or a connection id to tell it that this is an sso connection or and yeah, used to initiate SSO for an organization, or if we're not initiating an SSO connection, we'll just use the AuthKit provider. So we can remove this additional config keys. We don't need a base URL. We're already setting that. We can remove this uh, auth0 URL because that's just grabbing it from the config. The only thing that we need to set or have some configuration for would then be, hmm, we probably need a an organization ID that we can pass into this string. And we also would need a maybe any kind of provider ID. So instead of AuthKit, we could also use these and we would need this as specific settings that we would want to pass into this auth URL parameter. So why don't we say that it's going to be AuthKit by default but if you set a specific provider or an organization ID or even a connection ID in this package, then it will default to that. So we can say perhaps there's a protected uh, use auth kit. We can set that to true. So it's using auth kit by default. So that way here, if this use auth kit is true, we're going to add to this URL, this authorized URL, the provider auth kit so we should be able to do maybe instead we'll say that this is a url and we can add on to the url and say that this url now has and provider equals auth kit that looks good now we can return the url maybe for clarity's sake we'll say that this is the auth url so now we're saying it should use auth kit by default for the provider but if any provider is input and so that way we'll have initial method maybe down here to say we can set the provider and modify that url string as needed so maybe we'll have a, a public function of with organization id and so what we can set here is first we want to say that this uh, auth kit or use auth kit is false but then we can set the parameters of organization id to the organization id that is passed in these parameters will then set organization id for that response for that request i should say to whatever organization id we set so just like this api expects so why don't we do the same thing but we'll do it for that connection id so we'll say with connection id and then last but not least we'll do it for a provider as well because we could pass in if AuthKit is default, we could pass in any of these as well. So again, these parameters are just what this API expects for that slash authorize. So we have everything set up. We're actually going to use this repository locally in a new Laravel application. So then in my code directory, which is the directory for my projects, I'm going to say Laravel new, and we can say testing work OS. The goal with this new Laravel application is going to be able to test this new project that we created as a work os provider so that way we can see uh, in real time is everything working are we receiving the information we need to receive from the provider is there any changes that we need to make once we make the changes it's easy to kind of test it in real time before we actually uh, publish this to composer or in this case create a pull request for the socialite providers package so in that testing work os directory we created why don't we open this up in our code editor then we'll go ahead and install it so the first thing that needs to happen for installing any social provider is we need to install that provider via composer and so how can we do this within a local package well it's pretty simple what we can do in our composer.json we can say we need repositories and that's going to be an array with a type of path and then this is where we can pass in that url so we can say that this is the socialite providers 
work OS. So what we can do in our terminal is we can say composer require socialite provider slash work OS. And then we need to pass it a directive saying that this is the dev dependency, just because this has not been published yet. So again, this is going to be identical to uh, this PSR4. So now that that's been installed, it should be symlinked with this Laravel application. So any changes we make in this directory here, we should automatically see in this directory here. And looks like there was one small change. We don't have any docs just yet. So now in Laravel 11, there's going to be a bootstrap providers.php that we need to add. So we can add that there. Next, we need to add an event listener for that particular package. In this case, we need to add this into our app service provider. I'm just going to copy this and make the changes. So app service provider in the boot, we can add the event. That's the facade. And we can just call this the provider of our installed package. So we have this work OS provider that I'm bringing in. And why don't we do that for this as well? Socialite was called. So we just brought in those dependencies here for Socialite was called and the work OS provider package that we just installed that we're sim linking to our local file. And now we should be good to go because we're using this Socialite providers manager package, the environment variables that we're setting should be the same syntax and we shouldn't have to change anything for that. So we can pass this in as work OS for the app service provider. And then in our services config, here's where we can add work OS. So we'll go ahead and add work OS and we'll set these to the variables that we need. So we need a client ID, a client secret, and then a redirect. And why don't we actually, just for simplicity and clarity's sake, I know in the work OS dashboard, the redirect is going to be called redirect URI. So why don't we call it that redirect URI. So now in our environment variables, we can go ahead and add those work OS client ID, client secret, and redirect URI. And we'll set those. I've already refreshed these. And in our redirect, why don't we set this to our app URL? So we're going to have testing work OS dot test. And what we can say is the default configuration for socialite. So that would be slash auth slash work OS or the name of provider and then the callback URL. So we'll go ahead and set that in our work OS config. Set it to default. Now we should be good to go and test this out. So in our web routes, what we can do is maybe say a route git, and we can say the login. And instead of returning a view, what we can return is socialite, pull that in driver, work OS redirect. So this should, if we've set up everything correctly, this should redirect us to the auth kit that we have set up in our work OS uh, application, our work OS dashboard, because we're not passing in any parameters, we could pass in the with organization ID, but we're just keeping it plain and simple for now and should be using auth kit. So in testing work OS dot test, and we would go to slash login, we should see, and there we go. There's our auth kit that we've set up. So again, this is a way that we have now enabled work OS to be enabled within our socialite provider. So if I was to log in via GitHub, we don't have a route to call us back just yet. Yeah, not found, but you can see here in the URL, we have this auth work OS callback. Okay, that's directing properly. And then we have this code. First, let's just get all the information from here and maybe grab the user in that specific instance. Or in, in this case, they have been authorized, but now we need to authenticate the user. So let's go ahead and create a new route. We'll say route git, and we can say auth work OS callback. So first, why don't we go ahead and just grab the user. And since we set up a socialite driver, what we can do is say, we'll say the user equals the socialite driver work OS that we're using and then getting the user. So it should, because we set that up in our package, be able to grab the user from that token and give us the necessary information. Why don't we go ahead and die and dump the user just to see. And yeah, there we go. We have the ID of the user. We have the nickname. Again, that's things that we have set in our package file here.
So this is the provider. We set that nickname, name, email, avatar. This is all stuff that we could set uh, differently if we wanted to. So now we have all the necessary information to actually create a new user in our database based off of this. So we can sync it if we wanted to, or in that, or in this case, just log in the user with this necessary information. Instead of dying and dumping, what we could say is we have the user and we need to update or create a new user. So in this case, we need to update or create. If we were to take a look at the Laravel Socialite docs here, you can kind of see we have the callback where we get the user from Socialite. Yes. And then update or create. And this is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to update or create and then add the information that we're getting from this Socialite driver. So in this case, we can update based off of a ID. In this case, the provider ID is what we really want to set. So maybe we have this provider ID. Um, or we could even say work OS ID if, this, if that's the only provider we are using within Socialite within this application. And we can set that to the user eh, user ID because that's what we have here. The ID is that work OS user ID. So that's going to be the one that doesn't change. So now it's going to update or create based off of this user ID. So if that user ID exists, then we'll put in this information. Now we can authenticate with that user. So auth login user, and why don't we redirect them to the home route? And we'll call this one the home route. For time's sake, we create a new migration that adds all of this behind the scenes. So that way we have actual information in our user table, which we don't have right now to get all of this set up and stored. There we go. And let's go ahead and migrate this artisan migrate fresh we have a new user let's log them in so login okay i'm going to authenticate within github and now we should have our user authenticated great so if i was to have an additional page maybe a dashboard where i displayed some information let's just do that real quick and there we go now we have the name set up again we're authenticating using work os so how do we use the organization id this would be something that you could then implement in your application where maybe after someone has signed up with your application you create a new organization with work os's api but then how do you get people to log in based off that organization? Well, maybe it's a subdomain on your app that you pass in that particular organization ID. In this case, we've set this up within the WorkOS Socialite provider so that we can in our web route, instead of calling WorkOS user, or instead of calling WorkOS redirect, I should say, we can say with organization ID, and we could pass that in there. Now we can redirect a user to a SSO login. And perhaps we're grabbing this organization ID from the database. This could be something that you could set up with, for a multi-tenant app where now you have users who are logging in via SSO. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So we'll say slash login. And now we have this identity provider. And this is just a test that I've set up within WorkOS's dashboard, but we could have its own SSO profile specific to that organization. You can see how this could be incredibly valuable if you have multiple organizations who you need to initiate and instantiate users based off of their Google Workspace or Okta or whatever provider that they might have. And being able to have this passed in to the socialite driver is incredibly helpful because it can be dynamic, it can change. But also just having this as a default of AuthKit is incredibly helpful too. You can see the benefits that something like this could have, especially if you move into more enterprise-y type of users who are expecting something like IDPs or uh, user provisioning within something like Okta or Google Workspace. Now, this Socialite provider that we created within WorkOS has the ability to use AuthKit from WorkOS or SSO. So you can dynamically pass in that organization ID as you see fit based off of their subscription within your app, for example. This just goes to show that there are so many things within the Laravel ecosystem that are made incredibly easy 
even if you have to spend some time configuring and adding new additional ones. We didn't have to spend all the time setting up particular parameters or options within our API call. It just worked out of the box because we're using Socialite and Socialite gives us that ability to kind of have that background, that, that base for us ready to go. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can maybe add your own Socialite provider or get started with building on top of things that Laravel has already given for you. So keep creating.